Good morning, everybody. So I have a word that I learned this past week, and I want to know, do you know this word? The word is hangry. You know that word, hangry? You all know that word? I bet they all know that word out there, hangry. What does it mean? What does hangry mean? What does it mean? Hungry and angry. Have you ever felt hangry before? Yeah. yeah? What did you do when you felt hangry? Um, well, I just used to go to the supermarket and eat, but I was super angry. So you wanted to go get something to eat, but you were super angry. So the only thing that solves our hanger is usually getting something to eat. Right. Yeah. So I brought with me something here today. These are little bars and stuff that we have in our, our little food pantry there because um, sometimes the staff get hangry. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, the, we have a lot of people that come to visit us that are dealing with a lot of issues in life um, that they maybe don't have a home to stay in. Maybe they don't have um, a car to drive. Maybe they don't have money. And that can make people pretty upset, and especially if they don't have food to eat. And so they come to us, and a lot of times they're pretty hangry, and we give them something to eat. And so I'm going to give you guys each a bar today that you can take with you, and you have the choice. Maybe you want to have this bar for yourself, which is totally fine. You can do that. Maybe you're feeling hangry even later on in worship because you really want to go to lunch and you don't know why mom grabbed us here, but let's, it, it's for you if you want it. But you can also maybe look around you and see if somebody else might need this today, and maybe you could hand it to them and show them a little bit of God's love and let them have it. Maybe they're feeling a little bit hangry too. Maybe it's somebody that brought you here today that might need it as well, <laughs> and you're welcome to give it to them, Okay. Before we begin, if you are hangry right now, you're welcome to come up and get a bar during the sermon. Yes. When I was a kid, we had a pastor that came uh, to the church. I was three or four years old at the time. Richard Kling came to Alvin Lutheran Church, and he was my pastor throughout my uh, uh, childhood, all the way up until I graduated high school. And when pastors show up, they usually bring their own tool bag with them, some things that, that just belong to them. And he brought a table grace. And, um, and I had totally forgotten about this table grace and, until about uh, uh, 13 years ago, my first call, um, he showed up to church. And I was up there preaching, and I look out, and there's, there's my childhood pastor, and it was really cool. And then we went out to lunch afterwards, and he says, uh, let's pray. And so I you know, pause and bow my head to pray, and he starts singing. And I totally forgot this song, and it took me all the way back to my childhood. And so he starts singing. For health and strength and daily food, we give you thanks, O oh Lord. Anybody know that one? Anybody recognize it? I've had a few people that, have, that, have, that recognize it from the, from the past services, but it's not the most familiar one. For health and strength and daily food, we give you thanks, O oh Lord. Everybody. For health and strength and daily food, we give you thanks, O oh Lord. One more time. For health and strength and daily food, we give you thanks, O oh Lord. So I'm sitting at lunch with Pastor Kling and his family, my wife and our kids, and all of a sudden I forget that this song he does is in a round. So we're in, the, we're in this restaurant, and he's like, come on, come on. So we're going to do it. Y'all are going to sing part one. You're going to start. I'll bring you in as part two. This mighty section over here is part three, and I'll do part four. Are you ready? We're in the same song. Just watch me. I'll bring you in. Ready? For health and strength, for health and strength, for health and strength, for health and strength and daily food, we give you thanks, O oh Lord. For health and strength and daily food, we give you thanks, O oh Lord. Yes, good job, y'all. I was thinking about this song as I was reading scripture this past week because we have had just a plethora of bread analogies from John. We were in it last week. This week, we were, we're following the lesson that happened last week. And next week, it's the lesson right after. It's got more bread in it as well. Um, and next week, Bishop Sue Briner is going to be here to preach, and so I invite you all to come and listen to what she has to share. I know it's going to be amazing. Um, but all these bread talk got me thinking about this beautiful song and how in the Lord's Prayer, we ask for daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread, everything that we need to make it through today. And I started thinking about John's gospel and how Jesus is comparing bread and using bread as a topic. But before we jump into that, a little background on John. John's gospel is different 
from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, okay? It was written uh, generations after Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It was written for a certain group of people with a certain purpose, and, um, and it begins with this beautiful poem. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh. And it introduces us to Jesus, God incarnate in the flesh with us. God is with us. God was with us at the beginning of time, and God is with us in the flesh right now as the person of Jesus. And at the end of the gospel, it says, this book was written that you may come to believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, and that through believing you may have life in his name. So this flesh, Jesus, the Messiah, this whole thing has been written so that we would come to believe that this is truly happening, and that Jesus walked among us, and that Jesus is still with us, and that we are promised not only life, but eternal life. And in the middle of the gospel is the, is the most memorable line of all, 316, for God so loved the world. 317 says that God did not send Jesus to condemn the world, but that the world might have life. So the whole gospel has been written around us coming to believe that Jesus has been sent for all, the whole entire world, and that forgiveness and salvation is available for all. Okay, so just keep that in your back pocket as we discuss what's happening in today's gospel. Jesus is, is on the scene, and he's saying that if you eat of this bread, you'll never hunger again. If you drink of this, you'll never be thirsty again. And then there's this group of people that are called the Jews. And this is the first time that John announces this group of people. This phrase, the Jews, has been used in, in, in many other situations to hold people down, to ostracize people, to, to, for, for an entire holocaust. It has been used in very, very dangerous ways. But remember, this gospel was not written to condemn. So we're not here to condemn anything at all, nor is Jesus, if you pay attention to what he says here. So this group of people called the Jews don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. But there's another group that do, and that, 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 are, that are trying to follow what Jesus is saying and doing. Even a hundred years after Jesus is gone, this is still a complication. There are groups of people that don't really necessarily have come to believe yet, but there are people that absolutely have. And so there's this tension between the two. And here is Jesus in the Gospel of John saying, I am the bread of life. He says it four different times in four different ways. I am the true bread. I'm the living bread that came down from heaven. I am the bread of life. And the Jews who don't believe that he's the Messiah begin to complain. And, they, and why would they complain? Why would somebody complain for Jesus saying, I am the bread of life? Why would they complain? Anybody? What is I am? God, right? So these Jewish people would not want to hear Jesus say things like I am because that belongs to Yahweh. That belongs to God. That belongs to the God of Moses, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. Moses meets the burning bush and we hear the words, I am the I am. And then this I am takes Moses into Egypt to free the Israelites. And then it parts the sea for them. And then the I am gives them manna in the wilderness and, and rules and commandments to follow, to be in this relationship with them, pillar of fire, pillar of cloud. The I am is present in their history. They're present in their story. They believe in the I am. So were Jesus to say this, it would be a conflict for them. And so, yes, they would be concerned. And yes, they would uh, say some things to Jesus at this time. Because they also look at me and go, we know who you are. You're the son of Joseph. We know your mom and dad. How is it that you can say this? And then Jesus expounds on this. And he begins to open scripture to them. He's asking them to come to believe. He's not looking at them saying, you're wrong. You have to believe my way. He's unfolding it in front of them. And he unfolds scripture, and he quotes from Isaiah, and he quotes from Jeremiah. And he looks at them, and he says, your ancestors ate the bread in the wilderness, the manna, and they died. I am the living bread. And if you eat of this bread, you will live forever, for all of eternity, for eternal life. That's what I offer you. And if you look at verse 51, it says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. And Jesus is pointing back to the beginning of creation where the word was made flesh. I've been with you this whole time. I came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread in the present right now will live forever. And then the next part says, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. So Jesus is pointing to the future that the sacrifice that he's about to make is for all. 
It's for the, the Jewish Christians that are believing, and it's for the Jews that are questioning that the sacrifice is given for all, which means they no longer have to put blood on a doorpost. They no longer have to sacrifice an animal. They no longer have to do all these things. They can to build their relationship with God, but it is not contingent on their salvation. This is now gifted to them through this wonderful sacrifice of Jesus. He's blessing them with this, and he's saying, you all will have eternal life. He's inviting them to come to believe. This is a great message for us, because I don't know about you, but there's plenty of people that have all kinds of comments that they're making out there right now that are, that, are, that are saying things that are against certain things. What's the actual line that they use? They complain. I mean, social media is like the perfect place to complain. You can almost do it anonymously nowadays. And, and don't even get me started on the politics of our country right now. There's plenty that people are complaining about. And we have all kinds of factions and people that are putting each other in different camps and saying that you have to believe a certain way. And Jesus is saying, would you come to believe would you come to believe that I am the Messiah, the Son of the living God, and have life? And then maybe share that with the next person, regardless if they're complaining or not. There's this beautiful prayer that we say in, in weddings, and it's one of my favorites that happens. Um, it's in our liturgy, and it says uh, that we pray for those uh, for whom it's easy to love, and we pray for those with whom we struggle. There's people in our lives that we struggle with right now, maybe a family member, Maybe a child. I don't know. But we all have things that we struggle with. Today's a beautiful day for us to show them this beautiful gift that Jesus has given us, the salvation, the forgiveness, the mercy, the grace. And these are things for us to give thanks for. And so that's why we pray for health, so that we can do the work that God has set in front of us. That's why we ask for strength to meet the day ahead, especially with those that may be complaining against things that we're doing. And that's why we pray for daily bread, everything that we need to do what God has asked us to do. That's giving thanks right there. So sing it with me. For health and strength and daily food, we give you thanks, O Lord. For health and strength and daily food, we give you thanks, O Lord. Amen.